Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our coming Redeemer. Amen. When I think about getting a shot, I don't think about joy. Shots aren't fun. First, if you have kids, you know the the anxious anticipation that goes along with with the drive to the doctor's office and the, the tears that are both in the waiting room and also usually follow the shot. And shots hurt. Of course, not the, the shot itself. I am a very tough guy. But, you know, afterwards, your, your arm can, can ache a little bit, depending on what shot you get. And there can also be side effects. There are some crazy, rare, strange side effects that happen, but also some more common side effects. I mean, I, I know people who will carefully schedule their flu shot because they know once they have it, they are pretty much out of commission for the rest of the day, if not into the next day, just feeling miserable. Shots aren't fun. So why are there so many people rejoicing at the news of this vaccine for for COVID-19? Why are so many people joyful at the prospect of receiving not one, but two shots at some point next year? Well, it's probably because they are aware of what's going on around us. They understand the situation that we are in. They know what this vaccine means, not just for them, but for the world, for the economy, for for the education of our kids, for, for mental health and for relationships. So however unpleasant shots may be, they rejoice at the news of this vaccine. Today is the third Sunday in Advent. It's also known as Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete is Latin for rejoice. And our gospel lesson for this Gaudete Sunday is, well, it's another reading about John the Baptist. Now, when I think about John the Baptist, I don't really think about joy or rejoicing. I think about a, a curmudgeon crazy guy out in the wilderness yelling at people. So why is he placed at the center of Gaudete Sunday? First, I think both John the Apostle as well as John the Baptist would argue that John is not the center of Gaudete Sunday. Listen to what John the Apostle, the author of this gospel, wrote in verse verse 8. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And then what later is said in in uh, in, in verse 20. It says, when when the priests and the Levites came and asked, "Who, uh, who are you? It says, he confessed. He did not deny. He confessed, I am not the Christ. And then later, John the Baptist says, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am unworthy, I am not worthy to untie. So John's not the, the, the center, but still, where is the joy in this reading? Well, I think like the rejoicing that that people are having about the idea of getting two shots next year, the the joy here comes from being aware of what's going on and understanding the situation that we are in. I want to take you back to to the hymn that we just sang, When All the World Was Cursed. Verse one, it says, when all the world was cursed, By Moses' condemnation, St. John the Baptist came with words of consolation. With true forerunner's zeal, the greater one he named and him as yet unknown, a savior he proclaimed. God gave us the law through Moses. And by that law, we stand condemned before God. We, We have violated God's law and there is nothing we can do to fix it. But then here comes John. Yes, like uh, one of the prophets of old, but even more. Among you stands one you do not know. You don't know him. But he's here. He has arrived. A savior he proclaimed. 
verse 2 we sang, Before he yet was born, he leapt in joyful meeting, confessing him as Lord whose mother he was greeting. By Jordan's rolling stream, a new Elijah bold, he testified of him of whom the prophets told. Now there's a joyful John. You remember the story, right? When a pregnant Mary goes to visit her pregnant cousin, Elizabeth. And as Mary enters into the house and greets Elizabeth, little in utero John the Baptist responds. Elizabeth says, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Even before John was born, He was busy at work proclaiming the coming of our Savior. Verse 3. Behold the Lamb of God that bears the world's transgressions, whose sacrifice removes the devil's dread oppressions. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away our sin, who for our peace and joy will full atonement win. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, That's what John proclaims, actually in the verse that comes right after our gospel lesson today. When Jesus finally arrives on the scene, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John knows the situation that we are in, condemned under the law. But he also knows that the Savior has arrived. And no matter how uneasy this might make you feel, No matter how unpleasant it might be to have your status quo upended, this is good news. This is reason for joy. Okay, that was then, but what about us? I think we see that in verse 4. O grant, dear Lord of love, that we receive rejoicing. The word proclaimed by John, our true repentance voicing that gladly we may walk upon the Savior's way until we live with him in his eternal day. The joy that Christ came to bring is ours as well. And not just the joy of Christmas, but the joy of Easter and the joy of his second coming as well. Now, Many people think of joy to the world as a great Christmas hymn, but it's not. Now, I'm not saying that it's not a great hymn. I'm just saying that it's not a Christmas hymn. At least that's not what Isaac Watts intended. Joy to the world is not about Christ's first coming. It's about his second coming. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't sing it at Christmas time or even Advent or, or any other time we want. We're, in fact, we're going to be singing it at the end of the service. And as we do, don't just think about the joy that Christ came to bring at Christmas, that, that joy that John proclaimed. As you are singing this song, think about, meditate on the even greater joy that Christ promises to bring when he comes again. Where his blessings will flow, not just far enough to cover our sin and to restore our relationship with the Father. No, his blessings will flow far as the curse is found. No more sin, no more pain. No more sickness, no more brokenness, no more death. Joy to the world. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.